Okay, folks, let's talk about the profile. That's your next story. Um, first story that uh, you're going to be writing this semester is going to be um, a profile of a living, actual human being. Um, I'm going to use this as a cheat sheet. This book that I wrote several years ago, it's called The Essential Feature. It was published by Columbia University Press. Probably can still buy it at Amazon.com, but I have to tell you, I haven't seen a, a, a royalty from that thing in quite a few years. Um, I didn't ask you to buy it, obviously, for this for this class because it's out of date. It was written when the internet was still in its cradle, and people wrote for print publications. Today, print publications are going the way of the dinosaur and you probably had better be learning to write for the internet, for electronic media. Um, if I really wanted to be a professional writer today, I would be trying to figure out how I could make a living and build some prominence working on internet publications and uh, for broadcast media. Okay, uh, I think if there's any place for writers today, content providers, that's where it is. Okay, the profile. Let's talk about the profile. Um, the profile is a story that's built almost entirely on interviews and observation. To profile a human being, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to create a... <sighs> the word is escaping me. Just call me Jan Brewer. Um, you want to draw a word picture. You're trying to, to do a portrait of this person in writing. And you're using many of the techniques that a fiction writer uses to write um, fictional characterizations. You'll probably remember, if you've ever taken a course in um, the novel, in the short story, whether you've taken that it is a writing course or is a literature course, you've probably learned that there are three kinds of characterizations. There are flat characters, and those are characters that are just, you know, they're the cardboard in the scene, cardboard characters in the scenery of the character, main character's life. Um, they, um, they're given one or two characteristics, but you don't know anything else about them. There are characters in relief, who are given several characteriz characterizations, several several um, character characteristics, okay, that may give you a little bit better picture of them as a human being, but you don't really know them as a person. And then there are characters in the round, and those are the main characters of a, of a book or a novel. Same thing is true with journalistic writing. You can do a full-blown characterization of somebody where you end up telling the world what their life was like from infancy forward, or you can do less and less detailed characterizations. Um, for a magazine article, an ordinary magazine, something like Phoenix Magazine, Texas Monthly, um, you would be doing something kind of in the middle. You'd be trying to get a detailed portrait of the person, but obviously you can't tell the readers person's entire life story in 1800 words. That's not very much space, and that's a probably typical profile length for these kinds of publications. Um, for a more sophisticated publication, something like The New Yorker or Esquire, that kind of thing, you would have more space and you would provide a more detailed portrait. Um, now, these interviews of yours Here's what you're going to do. By the time you've finished interviewing and taking notes on everything you can find out about the person, and then interview the person in person and the person in person, boy, and heard them um, tell you their viewpoint on things, you're going to come to some kind of a conclusion about this person. You can't help it because you're a human being and that's what you do. So what you want to do is is, is take that assessment or that conclusion about the person's character and make that mm, the thesis, as it were, of your profile. That's what's going to govern your angle on your, on your profile story. 
So what you want to do is sit down, read all of your notes, everything you've learned about the person, and um, write a one or two sentence summary of what you think about the person. What is that conclusion that you've arrived at about the person? You may never say that overtly in the story, you probably shouldn't, but that should be what you have in the back of your mind as you're gathering together the details out of your notes and out of your interview to support the angle that you're going to take on this person. Um, there used to be a writer named Bob Green. I don't even know that he's still around. He used to write for Esquire, and he was very good at this kind of thing. And one time he wrote a story about Christy McNichol, who at the time was a starlet. And uh, she was very young. <laughs> he goes on a trip, a shopping trip with her. They're accompanied by her chauffeur and by her grandfather. Okay. Um, so he describes this adventure with Christy McNichol. He never makes a judgmental comment about her. He never says anything about what kind of a human being he, she is. But by the time you reach the end of the story, you yourself have come to con the conclusion that he's been spending his afternoon with a spoiled, self-centered little brat. Um, the most overt comment, please don't gap, the most overt little comment that he makes about her that gives you that impression comes near the end of the story where he says to her, he says, I asked her what she thought the greatest public misconception about her was. That I'm the all-American girl, she said. Perfect and good and level-headed. Well, we've already seen she's not. Um, choose your descriptive details and quotes to characterize the person showing how she or he thinks and acts. When you meet the subject, you need to make yourself slow down. Watch the person, look at everything around her or him, observe the decor of the office, the way she wears her clothes. Does she teeter around in high, school, high heels or does she wear sensible clothes? And is he wearing Oxfords or does he have lizard skin boots? And are those shoes of his scuffed up or are they polished? Um, does she drink bourbon or does he, she drink scotch? Those things all tell you about how does he hold his cigarette if he smokes. Those are things that people unconsciously use to characterize themselves. And they tell you a lot about, not only about the person, but about what the person thinks about himself or herself. Okay? So, um, the other thing you need to be aware of is that when you start writing this, this story, you're going to be doing more than piling up random observations and anecdotes. A profile is not a stack of factoids. It's something that you mold and you sculpt to create a bust, as it were, or a portrait of the person that you're trying to characterize. Um, Chuck Bowden used to be good at this. I haven't seen one of Chuck's stories in a long time. I think he's writing books now. But I used to edit Chuck Bowden's stuff when he worked for Arizona Highways. He moved on to bigger and better things. Um, but at one point, Chuck, Chuck interviewed Keith Turley, who at the time was the chairman of the Board of Arizona Public Service, which is, um, we used to regard APS as an avatar of the evil empire. Okay, so it was pretty funny. Um, one of the many complaints that Chuck had about these particular industrialists was how insensitive they were to what they were doing to the southwestern environment. Um, he's in Turley's office and he's, he's observing, he's writing down notes, and one of the things he sees is a collection of eagle figurines. All right, He is already characterized with one verb. What he thinks of Turley, he says, his company is, quote, an empire that rips tens of tons of coal a day from the Indian lands of the Navajo and the Hopi. So now he asks Turley about those brass figurines. And the conversation goes like this. He offers that bewitching smile and says he doesn't know quite how it got started, but it did. Charlie, calm down. Sorry, dog is sneezing. is because he ate a pen earlier today. And now everybody gives, gives them to him. 
Yes, he likes eagles. He has never really seen one in the wild. Oh, once, you know, someone said, look up there, an eagle. But he couldn't really tell. It was just a big bird. Um, tells you a lot about his insensitivity to nature and what he's ripping up, or what his company is ripping up. Now, do not belittle your, your, your subject with details that detract from his or her dignity, unless you intend to do that. Once I was asked to rewrite a story by a young journalist, she had done a profile of Scott Momaday. He's a very well-known uh, Native American writer. Uh, he was, uh, at the time, he was associated with the University of Arizona. He was a cultivated and distinguished gentleman, but to meet her, he dressed casually. Well, that was a very informal setting, too. After she expressed awe, wide-eyed awe, that anybody growing up on a reservation could even learn to write in English at all, much less win a Pulitzer Prize. She went on to focus on his loose shirt tails and his, quote, bulging girth. By the time she finished, she'd unintentionally drawn a classic hackneyed picture of a fat Indian. It was very offensive. Um, when you profile members of other races, other ethnicities, other cultures, other genders, any kind of otherness from you. Be careful, because we all carry stereotypes around inside us. We can't help it. That's part of being human, too. The other is always different from us, and so suspect. Um, try to get over those stereotypes. When you go back to revise and edit your story, Watch carefully to be sure that you haven't unwittingly interpolated something in there that's really a prejudice and not an objective fact. Um, it's easy to get that stuff in there, and you don't want it in there because it makes you look like a fool. Okay. Um, when you do the profile, you should interview several people. Obviously, you're going to interview your subject. It's always good to interview um, if it says he's a business person or an academic or a writer, it's a good idea to interview people who are in the same business, find out something about his reputation or her reputation. Um, secretaries are always very good. I've interviewed secretaries and learned some really interesting things about people. Um, Ex-wives, very fine. So ask around, try to interview other people. Uh, what else can I tell you? Is there anything else? Yeah. For most magazines, the kind of publication that you're likely to write for, something like Phoenix Magazine, one interview of the subject will do um, an hour, an hour and a half, two or three hours at most. Um, it's always good to try to get the person to let you follow him or her around doing something either in his business, what he does for a living, or if he has a hobby or there's something special that you're focusing on, try to get that person to show you what it's like to be doing that. If you can, you come up with a really nice profile. Um, that's not already always necessary for something like a city magazine, but the editor will be beside herself with joy. If you do write something like that, you go to that extra trouble, and you will end up with a clip that is an example of what you can do that may get you into bigger and better paying markets. If you are already writing for those bigger and better paying markets, as a matter of course, you do everything you can to learn about that person, including following him or her around in his life. Um, that's about as far as I'm getting here. I can't see how far this is how long I've been talking, but I'm not allowed to talk more than 15 minutes. So let's come to a stop. Be sure you read the passages in Garrison about writing the profile.